What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today I am building a mid-range workstation PC. That's right, I said workstation. This is not a gaming rig, so we're switching things up a little bit, but it is for a purpose. This is actually gonna be a system for my beloved father-in-law and cousin who happen to work together at their family-owned machine shop where they do a lot of 3D modeling, rendering, AutoCAD, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and their current system right now is, is just a hot piece of garbage, quite frankly. I think they're still using integrated graphics. It's a pre-built, it must be five plus years old if that's any indication that it's time for an upgrade. So hopefully this new system will speed up their overall workflow and productivity. So getting right into things. Let's talk about the CPU choice first. Uh, I went with an AMD Ryzen 5 1600 and uh, I went with Ryzen over Intel because when you, when you, when you talk about Intel, I mean, what, what do you got? You got the mainstream options, which is like Katie Lake, for example, uh, but you only get four cores and up to eight threads. That's if you're spending over $300 for a 7700 or 7700K. But with Ryzen, um, AMD has, has offered us a lot of mid-range options that are quite affordable that still rock a pretty high core and thread count. So here we have, again, the 1600 has six cores and 12 threads. I should also mention that the software that um, my father-in-law and cousin use at the machine shop is Autodesk Fusion 360, which I looked it up, does utilize multiple cores and threads, so it can take advantage of hyper-threading. So I feel like this was a great bang for the buck option at just around two, two to $200 to $210. The 1600 is uh, just an amazing price to performance chip. Um, that is, again, about $100 cheaper than the mainstream desktop CPU uh, from Intel. And to save a bit of cash, we're gonna be using the Wraith Spire cooler that came included with our CPU here because it's a fantastic little stock cooler. Never thought I'd say that, but there you have it. And as far as the motherboard goes, we're going B350 because who needs X370 in a system like this? Even though we are using a gaming-oriented motherboard from Gigabyte, this is the AB350 Gaming 3, so it's got, you know, like a fancy heat sink, it's got fancy heat sinks on the VRM and the chipset, but it's still only about $110. It's fairly budget-oriented, and it has just a ton of connectivity, more than enough for what we need today. It's also uh, one of the, I think it is the only part that I'm contributing to this build, just uh, because I had it lying around. I don't really have much use for it at this point. So you probably could find a cheaper motherboard that would get the job done for what they need it for. But since I already have this around, might as well give it a proper home. For memory, we've got a 16 gigabyte kit of Corsair Vengeance LPX. This is uh, two by eight gig sticks, of course, at 2133 megahertz. Oh no, wait, actually, this is not right. What are you doing here? I did not mean to put a 2133 megahertz kit along with our Ryzen system here. So here we have some modules that are 3200 megahertz. These are some G-Skill Rip Jaws 5 and still the uh, same 16 gigabyte capacity, two by eight gig sticks. We're gonna be slotting that in instead. Now for our graphics card, I opted for a workstation GPU just because it's got a little bit more driver implementation that's optimized for workstation applications. This is the NVIDIA Quadro 4000. Um, not the P4000, that's that's much more expensive than this one. And it's a refurb, which, which is why it has no packaging. The fan's a little bit dusty, we can clean it out later. Now it's true that gaming cards can sometimes work adequately in a 3D modeling software, but just to be safe and err on the side of caution, I wanted something that was guaranteed to work smoothly with what they're using this for. And when you think about gaming cards, I mean, they're really more tailored for performance, trying to render as many frames as possible at the expense of absolute precision when it comes to calculating and doing all the maths that's required for a workstation application. So that's why we're going to go with a, a Quadro 400. If you guys were curious, it's about a $200 card, refurbished at least. I'm not sure what the MSRP is on it new, if you can even find many of those, because this is an older uh, architecture. This is actually based on Fermi um, from good old NVIDIA. So uh, yeah, there's that. But at the end of the day, the system requirements for Fusion 360 aren't too heavy. And I feel like if they were able to scrape by even with integrated graphics, that this is just going to make their, the system fly in comparison, uh, at least for the next few years. Years, definitely. Powering the system, we've got an EVGA 500 watt, just 500 watts. There's no real brand name because it's a budget, cheapy power supply, but it is 80 plus certified and it, uh, that, that's pretty much where the features end. It's not modular, it doesn't have fancy looking uh, black cables or anything like that, but all we really care about here is a unit that will power our system safely without blowing up a few weeks down the line. For storage, we've got an SSD Plus. Uh, this is a SanDisk 240 gig SSD, just a regular old SATA drive. Uh, we've got a 3.5 inch form factor, I'm sorry, 2.5 inch form factor, of course, and uh, nothing fancy, it's, it's a fairly budget um, drive. However, it's going to be loads faster than any mechanical drive sitting next to it. Speaking of which, we've got a 500 gig Seagate Barracuda. This is a cute little uh, two and a half inch form factor. 
Um, I don't know, I, I, I wasn't really expecting it to be this size, but that's how it came. And I, I, I accept hard drives of all shapes and sizes. I'm not gonna discriminate. So that should be a pretty nice little setup there. By the way, this is gonna be for the boot drive. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, and then finally, our chassis that we're gonna be fitting all this in. This is actually what I'm most excited about is to build inside of the Focus G from Fractal Design. This is one of their brand new budget cases. I think the MSRP is only like 50 bucks or something, but it looks pretty nice for $50 and I really like kind of like the, the the white. It's got a large side panel window, which uh, you don't see too often on budget cases at that price point. And uh, radiator support as well at the front, top and back, I believe. Uh, tons of airflow at the front as well. You get two included 120 millimeter fans. They are white LED. We'll be able to see those powered on later, of course. And there is probably a bunch of other features in there that uh, I don't want to talk about right now. But those are all the parts, guys. You can find links to any of this stuff in the description below. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and clear the table and we can get to building this thing. One, two, three, go team go! That was kind of sad when you do it by yourself. Whatever. <laughs>
just sort of aid in the airflow path here. You might want to install a 120 at the back. But overall, ladies and gentlemen, this is a pretty sweet looking mid-range to budget workstation uh, system. So hopefully it serves my father-in-law and cousin well, speeds up their workflow and all that jazz, but that is pretty much gonna do it for now, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think of this workstation. If you've built a workstation, uh, pr you know, primarily for either editing or 3D modeling or whatever, feel free to share your experience with the class in the comments below. Otherwise, feel free to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can also check out Bitwit Ultra, my ad-free early access channel for a buck fifty a month. The first two weeks are completely free and you can back out any friggin' time. As always, I'm Kyle Bidwit. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this video is a little short. I've got a, a best friend's bachelor party to go to this weekend, which means, you know, social life equals less time for YouTube, which, you know, is always kind of a, a conflicting battle inside, but I digress. So on that note, I'm going to get the heck out of here. Have a good one, guys. I love you all so much. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.